Hello, my name is Kurt Schwer, and this is Research Tools Video 14, Python Part 7, More Reusable Code. This is a part of the UNH Center for Coastal and Ocean Mapping Joint Hydrographic Center Research Tools course. And in this video, we're going to go through some of the code that we had from before. So in video 13, we took a look at uh, parsing NEMA strings, uh, particularly the GGA GPS message. And we wrote a little parser that you see here that walks through it and pulls out the latitude and longitude, or the X and the Y, and returned a list of coordinates for that. And the, the key thing here was that this was just the first pass through writing a particular function to parse this data. And we'd like to start building software that we can reuse throughout other projects. And that implies thinking a little bit more about how we might want to lay out the data and uh, add more functions that can parse different types of NEMA strings, etc. So we're going to go ahead and start with a new file, and we're going to work through building a parser for a number of NEMA messages. And first, let's get some NEMA data. So I'm going to use a wget to pull this file nemalog.bz2. And in this file, it's a little bit different than the last time, I've removed the extra metadata that my logger puts into there so that we just have traditional NEMA data without the extra metadata that I often have in my files. Let's go ahead and get the data, and we'll do a ls-l, see how we're doing here. We'll be unzipped to that file. Now we'll uncompress it, and we'll take a quick peek. So word count dash l nema.log. So we've got quite a few lines and we'll do a head of nema.log. So there's some metadata, and traditionally this is the checksum right here. Right after that would be the message that uh, which receiving station and the time it was recorded. So this is what you actually get over the serial port without any of my extra stuff on it. So let's go create ourselves a file that's a little bit more reusable. So we'll call it nema.py, and this will be a, basically a module. We'll start off with some documentation. And we'll say nema.py parse nema ASCII messages from GPS and other devices. So typically, when you have a real file, you would actually have something a little more explanatory than that. But that'll get us started. And um, let's go ahead and fire off IPython to have a place to work with. And we're going to grab one of these GGA strings. So I'm going to do an edit copy. And we'll start off with test GGA equals. And we'll just give ourselves some data to work with. So we're going to do a yank with control Y. And there's our test data to work with. So we can, with this very boring module, we can say import NEMA and then NEMA dot and see what's possible. We can also say dir nema and that will give us the, the things that are inside of that module. Now if you notice here this is our test GGA string so we can say print nema dot test GGA and we've got one line of nema to work with. Now before we had let's do a split control x2 control x and then a b and we'll switch back to our old file. Here, we loop through an entire file and we only parse GGA. It might be better to have a function that decodes just a line of GGAs, and rather than returning a long list of strings, or of uh, coordinates, we want something that will let us then figure out which parts of that NEMA string we're gonna want to mess with. And a typical way you might want to do that is with a dictionary. So a dict equals, and you might want something more like this, x, and then we could say you know, minus 70.3, y, and we'll say we're at 48. So if we hit enter, and if we type a dict, we get back exactly the same thing, and we could say sub x, and it's kind of like accessing an array, but by a named field and that would then be able to pull out our x and y. So this way we can decode all of the different fields in the name string because there's, there's a time in here, there's latitude, 
there's longitude, and then there's other fields over here that we'd like to be able to parse to, one of which being the altitude of the GPS receiver, or Z, which I think is this one. So let's go ahead and start building ourselves a parser that's going to work on just one MEMA line, and then you can recombine that together with other stuff to walk through a file full of different kinds of data and grab all the parts. So control X zero to get rid of that window. And let's go ahead and create ourselves a function called GGA. And it's going to take a line. And right now, let's do nothing. So remember, the pass command just does nothing. It's a placeholder. So we can do a reload MEMA. And what we're going to be doing is say, calling it MEMA.GGA. And we'll pass it MEMA.TestGGA. And right now, it does absolutely nothing. But that gives us the basics of a function that we're going to flush out. Now, typically, how I tend to structure things is the first thing I would do is put in some tests to make sure that we're actually looking at the right data. So we know that there is going to be a GGA inside of that line. And if there's not, there's a problem. So we want to return null. So we can test that. So if not, um, let's see, if GGA not in, let's just go try it over here. And best to always try things out. So GGA in MEMA test GGA, true. And one of the other ones was ZBA. So that's false. That's good. So let's try not. So that would be true. And if we try a GGA, that's false. So what we want is something like this, so that if we get a line that doesn't have a GGA, that returns true, and then we can get out of that. So if GGA not in line, then we can say return none. This is typically a way that people can indicate that something didn't work out the way you wanted. We could also throw exceptions. We haven't talked about exceptions yet, but we can, or sorry, raise in Python. Uh, throw in other languages. So that's our quick check for sanity. And then we can say we're going to build up a results dictionary. And this is an empty dictionary with two curly braces. And then we'll return results that will hopefully have actual stuff flushed out in it. So we'll save it with Control X, Control S. And let's go ahead and try that with uh, reloads. So we'll do Control R to search backwards and we'll type RE and then press enter. So let's go up to our function that we had before. This is our test function. And we get back our empty dictionary right there. So that's looking pretty good. We now have our sort of scaffold of things. And let's start parsing and building out our results. So the first part of our GPS string is GP. That's our talker. So this is the device that sent out the message. In this case, GP stands for GPS. So we can say results talker equals. And then we'll take our line. And we'll say line. And we'll have to see where this is. So let's go ahead and try it over here. We'll say MEMA test GGA. And I believe it probably starts at 1 and goes through three. Let's see if this is right. And in fact, we got our GP back out of that string. So we'll go ahead and do line one colon three. And that should give us our talker. And we're going to sort of test as we go. So we save that and we'll go do a reload and we'll try it out. So now we have our talker captured into our return dictionary. So let's go ahead and keep going. Now you could pick out the message from results. Um, if we say message type or something like that, we could pick that out of the line, but we know it's just going to be a GGA. We've already tested it, so GGA. And now we'll go start working on the various parts. So the first thing we're going to get is our time, which is hours, minutes, seconds. That's right in here. Our test message is kind of boring, so it's going to be 0, 0, 0. So perhaps maybe we want to get a better test message. So let's go ahead and type, um, let's just do, so remember bang is the shell command. So we'll do bang head dash 
10,000. So we're going to take the first 10,000 lines and we're going to go rep for GGA. So this will get us something that's a little bit more in the future. So you're going to see a whole bunch of stuff whiz by, hopefully, except for we have to give it a file name. So NUMA.log. Press enter. So I was using tab there to complete. So here's a whole bunch of things, and this is a much better test method. So we'll just grab this line right there. So do edit copy. And we're going to go ahead and comment out that one with a pound, and we'll say test GGA equals, and then we'll paste in our new test line. So this line will actually give us something a little more interesting in terms of time, though, so we can make sure that we're getting the right fields. So we'll save results. And if we look here, we actually want to start thinking about splitting apart our message. So I'm going to say fields equals line dot split. And since this is comma separated values type data, we're going to split on the comma. So this is going to give us the time field is just one of them. And we can say results hour equals fields sub. And then we're going to say this is field zero and this is field one. So fields one. And we're going to grab the first two characters of that. So we'll say colon two. So from the beginning with nothing in there. And then colon two to say go two characters forward. Results minutes and fields one and now we're going to grab two through four but not not including four and results oops second equals fields one and four to the end which should be two so let's go ahead and try this and see if we have any bugs yet or how we're doing so we'll do our reload and then we'll go ahead and try it. So there's our test case. Hit enter. And let's take a look how we did. So we should have 00, zero be our hours. That's 00, zero the string. Minutes should be 15. And we got 15 right there. And our seconds should be 59. And over here is our seconds 59. Looks pretty good. We're on our way to a parser. And what we want to do here is actually turn these things into numbers if they're supposed to be numbers. So we can say int, and we can do the same thing for each of these things. We convert these into integers, and let's give that a go. So if you remember right, we can take a string and turn it into an integer just by calling it like that. So it would be the equivalent of int 0, 0, return as 0. So let's go ahead and reload and try see if our things come out as numbers. So there we go. And we can even check it. We can say, we'll say our GGA equals and GGA sub minutes. We get 15. And we can ask the type of that. So type. And it looks good. We have an integer. Very nice. All right, let's keep working through this and see if we can create a few more fields. So now we can look at the next field, which is going to be in our test case. Right here, this is going to be our latitude. All right, so we're going to work on latitude. And let's see. We need to take a look at, so y equals, and I'm going to split this so we can see both of them. So it's control x2. All right, so we're looking at, this is field zero right here. This is field one right there, and field two. So we would say fields two, and go ahead and just stuff it in there. So we'll say results y equals y. And we'll, we're going to add a little bit more to this as we figure this out. So we'll say reload. And we'll give it a shot. And let's see what our y is. So y got this crazy number right there. So we're getting closer to having our latitude again. 
All right, so let's go back and figure out what we need to do. The uh, first thing we need to do is we need to split this apart right about here. So we're going to take that number and split the 43 off of it as our integer part of it. So we'll say int yields and then we'll grab the first two. So that should get us the 43 degrees off of the, the latitude field. And we'll give that a try. And looky looky, our y is 43. Pretty good. Now we'll go ahead and pull apart the rest of that. And we need to take the second part of that, which is going to be from there on. So we'll say fields 2, and we'll go from 2 to the end. And we want to, this is going to be a floating point number since we have a decimal place right in there. And since this is minutes, decimal minutes, we need to divide by 60. And let's see how we do with that. So we'll reload. And there we have 43.1352. Looking pretty good. Now we've got our Y. Now we need to be smart about this. We have north and south. We're lucky here that we're in the north northern hemisphere where there you don't have to put a minus sign on, but we should be good and we should put that in there. So we can say if fields three is south, we need to make our y be minus y. So we need to flip the sign of that to designate the southern hemisphere. And let's go ahead and I'll try and be quick here with the longitude. And I'm going to copy it from my notes. So x equals int fields 4. And we're going to take the first three digits this time, if you look right here. So 0, 7, 0 is our degrees la longitude. Plus float fields 4, 3 to the end. And divide that by 60 point. That decimal place isn't really necessarily required, but it's often a good reminder. And we'll say if fields 5, and right here we have a west where we do have to say minus because we're in the, the negative hemisphere here. So we'll say equals west x equals minus x, and results so it's x equals x. Let's give that a quick try. So we'll do a reload. And we have our x and our y very nicely. So let's uh, move on to the rest of it. And we'll see if we can parse the rest of the fields real quick. Let's give ourselves um, at least one more of those. We'll look at one of them. We want to grab the z. And so z is actually this one right here. And so that's position 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So we can say um, fields sub 9. Oops. We'll say results z equals field sub 9. And we want to take the floating point number of that. And that looks pretty good, so we'll give it a shot. Reload, rerun, and now we have a Z of 36.6, which is this number right here. This tells us meters, which is always going to be the same. So now we have a parser with that one file with Control X1. So now we have this GGA line that we can always use for any particular line. There's a few more fields that we can do, and in the final notes, I'll put all the fields in there. And we're going to Ignore the checksum right now. Uh, in the notes will be how to compute the checksum. And we're going to talk a little bit about how you might do this with uh, multiple uh, values. So we're going to go ahead and make another parser. So we're going to look for the VTG message. So grep will do bang head. So we're going to grab the first hundred lines or thousand lines of our NEMA.log rep vtg and here's our um, vessel motion line we're not actually moving and we're not actually a vessel here but it's a nice message to to parse 
So we can say test VTG equals, and we can paste that. So now we have our next message, and we can say def VTG for parsing that. Take a line, and this is going to be the parse course over ground and ground speed. So we can do the same thing we had before. So if VTG not in line, return none. Looks pretty good. And we can say results equals empty dictionary. Get ourselves set up. Return results. So our sort of blank function. Oops. And we can start parsing this. We can say fields equals line dot split on the comma again. And we can start parsing data. So if we have this position right here is going to be one, and that's going to be our true heading. You can kind of see that marked with a T right there. So we can say results heading true equals fields sub one, and we're going to want to make that a float and results heading magnetic. So this is the magnetic heading right here. And then we can say equals float fields three. So let's make sure that's zero right here. One, two, three. So that is a quick message to parse our, our, uh, our setup. And we can also do uh, a speed. So we'll do one of the speeds, results speed, and we'll do uh, kph, which is going to be this one, the 0 0.2 right there. And we'll say that's going to be a float, and we'll have to count again. So field 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We'll double check that that's 7. That should, in fact, be field sub 7. And let's go ahead and try that and see how it comes out and see if we've got any bugs. So we'll go ahead and say R, control R to search back, and we'll say RE for reload, control R again to get to the next RE, and enter, and we'll say NEMA dot uh, VTG, and we'll say NEMA dot test VTG, and we'll go ahead and run that. And in fact, we got back our heading true and magnetic and our speed in kilometers per hour of 0.2. This is not because we're moving. This is just uh, an effect seen from the wander of the GPS or noise in the system. So that gives us two functions to work with. And we want to create a function that could loop over all of the file and give us back our data. Uh, so we can do something that's called a generator. So create a generator that will loop over a file and basically figure out which lines it can parse and return back dictionaries for those. So we can say def parse in a file, file name. So here we're going to take all of our pieces and put them together. So you have the choice of either using your function up here, def vtg, or you can use this generator to walk over it. And we can say for line in open file name. Then we can say um, if GGA in line, we can do uh, this function called yield. And what yield does is it returns back with the data from that particular entry in it into an, a for loop that you're using to call this, and you'll see it done in a minute. So take my word for it right now. So we can say yield GGA line. So we're going to go ahead and parse that. And we can say elif VTG in line yield uh, VTG line. Now remember that when you're inside of a module, you don't need to refer to the function name inside of NEMA. So here you can just use VTG as the function, whereas elsewhere you're going to have to say import NEMA and then NEMA.VTG. 
So let's go ahead and try, oops, sorry, try our little generator here. And I'll show you a bit how to do that. And we'll see if we can see that at the same time. So we're going to reload our NEMA module, which is working. And we'll go ahead and say for message in parse NEMA file. And then we'll say NEMA.log colon. So what we've got here is our typical for loop. So we're going to put our message into this message line. And what will happen then is in parse NEMA file, it's going to call this function and keep calling it and loop through this file name until this runs out of data in there or something happens bad and it breaks. So we'll just say print message. So hopefully if all goes well, we're going to see a bunch of data come back. And here we go. Oops. And I need to call it the right way. So here I need to use the module name. And look at that, we have tons of data zooming by us here. So we'll see that um, there's lots of GGAs going by. And let's see if we actually had any of the VTGs. So we're going to comment some of this out just to try it. And we're going to reload. There's our reload. And we'll try this again. And there's all of our headings. So they were kind of buried in there. So this way, with our generator, you can walk through this file and have it figure out which line is what, parse it, and return back to the dictionary. That we could then be reassembling a uh, whatever part of the data we wanted into stuff to plot or do whatever management of that data that we wanted. And this code is much more re reusable than before because now we could write also another function that is, for example, load GGAs, file name, and we could have the same code we had before. So controller B, and this we're trying if we tried to then simulate this, we could say um, for line in open file name if. GGA in line, and we can say X list. Oops. We'll just do X, we'll get rid of the list, make it simpler. X equals Y equals. And if you had that, we could just say uh, something like, let's see, so GGA of our line. And now we could say x dot append message sub x, assuming that that's what we had. Oops, we'll do x zero, x two, jump to the top, and we're going to take a peek in what we have here. So talker, and we saved x and y with x and y. Okay, good. So y dot append message sub y. All good, and then we can say return x comma y. So now we have a much tighter function, and it's using our stuff we had before. So you just need to know that this will parse a GGA, and then we'll go and use those fields in there. And th that's it for today. This will hopefully give you a sense of trying to make the code a little bit more modular. This isn't actually how I parse NEMA data in my libraries. I actually use something called regular expressions but should give you a sense of trying to make things a little more modular and by doing this with having a def GGA that just parses one line, you can reassemble this in multiple different ways and we can build parsers for each of the different message types that are inside of our file. Thank you for joining me and I hope you come back for more.